currently. The advanced economic condition and the rapid acceleration of technological developments require businesses and organizations to manage economic resources and higher quality information as the basis for making the right decision. A controlled financial system is one of the success factors for an activity both for individuals, companies, and even countries. That is the role of an accountant. Do you want to be a part of that? Do you have global orientation? International Program of Accounting or IPAC Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta answer this challenge. International Program of Accounting or IPAC Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta is one of the undergraduate study program and an accounting study program. Faculty of Economic and Business Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta and is one of the leading study programs with superior accreditation from Ban PT. International Program of Accounting or IPAC is a special class that uses English as the language of instruction for students who are globally oriented, who plan to work in international companies or organizations, work abroad or continue their education to a broad university. Currently, IPAC emphasize learning on business mindset in the digital era where in this era it takes an accountant who can build accounting information system and digital based accounting audit the presence of digital era is of course also balanced with the formation of islamic character ipac students are required to participate in student exchange, credit transfer for one semester, and can participate in double degree program in Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta International University Partners. Undergraduate student will get title Bachelor of Accounting or SAK, and with double degrees, student can get three academic degrees, consists of Bachelor of Accounting or SAK, Bachelor of Arts or BA, and Magister of Business Administration or MBA within 5 years. It is intended that students get international experience both academic and non-academic. What benefit will you get if you join IPAC? Which are First, opportunities to participate in a student exchange at partner universities around the world. Second, Opportunities to do work internship program at financial institution and government institutions. IPEC students will be an expert in English by getting intensive English course for four semesters and proved by a tool certificate. Fourth, international community service. Fifth, international summer course. Sixth, Visiting Professor Class IPAC alumni who graduate with qualification working in the financial sectors such as Financial Service Authority or Autoritas Jasa Keuangan OJK, banking, private, government companies both domestic and abroad and institution and the Finance Ministry. Let's reach your dream with IPEC Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta. IPEC UMY, Global and Holistic Accountant. Yogyakarta. The soul of Java. The culture richness kept maintained bearing and pretentious souls, creating young intellectuals who are ready for the world. Hugh, born Muhammadiyah Association, a progressive Islamic organization, engages in various fields of life. One of them is education. By the idea of Professor Dr. Kahar Muzakir, on the 1st of March 1981, Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta presents to enrich young intellectuals' competence, actualizing Muslim scholars who are noble.
competent, confident, able to develop science and technology, useful for the nation and world developments. Accounting Department Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta is a leading accounting department in Indonesia. This department has got A accreditation since 2005 when only a few accounting departments can get this accreditation status. There are many achievements that students have received. Winner in a number of capital market competition, winner in scientific competition, and recently winner of National Enterprise Resource Planning 2018 competition that five students of this department will represent Indonesia to compete in Singapore. Therefore, this department has produced competitive alumni that they can compete in job market while maintaining Islamic values. I believe by joining Accounting UMA, you have made a very good decision to be a successful person in this world and the hereafter, inshallah. Accounting Department of Universitas Muhammad Yogyakarta was established in 1992. Our mission is to produce bachelor of accounting who master in science and technology, have a good characters, integrity, and global insight. To support the graduate competence, we provide extra services, such as training and certification, like Islamic banking training, taxation training, internal audit training, external audit training, and most management training. Meanwhile, we also provide certification such as Enterprise Resource Planning from Monsoon SIM and Associate Certified Public Accountant from Indonesian Institute of Public Accountant. To face the business changes in the era of Industry 4.0, the curriculum of accounting department focus on ability to utilize information technology and ability to take strategic decision. We expect that accounting department can keep contribution in producing human resources who are excellent, Islamic, and have a global insight. Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta has set up a new tagline of Young and Global. In order to speed up this mission, the Department of Accounting proposed to establish international program of accounting Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta. This program it's expected to be the driving force for continuous improvement in providing better services and facilities in education system at the accounting department. The increasing needs of graduates with good qualification and international recognition drive the accounting department to focus on developing main competencies of technology information, international financial reporting standards, public sector, and Islamic accounting. Under the professional management, towards the world-class quality, with a vision to become a global-oriented accounting department by focusing on strengthening faith and piety to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, mastering science and technology of accounting, and being the center of excellence, which is beneficial for people. With the missions of being actively involved in the nation's development process enlightenment of people through three pillars of higher education and creating young, noble and global accountants. Since 2005, Accounting Department Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta has been accredited A. The establishment of academic atmosphere and the development of competitive character are improved continuously. As a result, the public trust to the accounting department is even higher, which can be seen from the large number of applicants. Learning in the accounting department of Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta is supported with good quality of supporting facilities such as library, where students can access the relevant and appropriate references, such as e-journal and e-book. Administration room, where students get administrative services in Wi-Fi area, laboratory for practicum, in Kiai Haji Ahmad Dahlan Mosque. Accounting departments also directly supervises Accounting Students Association, 
which can serve as a facility for students to develop soft skills in the fields of organization and self-development. Besides supported by qualified facilities, academic atmosphere is also established by the certified lecturers academically and practically who are actively involved in academic and professional activities nationally or internationally. As an effort to renew the accounting science owed. The learning process also reverts to the competency based curriculum, referring to Indonesian National Qualification Framework through learning method, approaches of centered learning, discussion, presentation, and problem solving. Accounting Department also tries to create prospective accountants who are professional, responsive, confident, creative, trusted, and innovative on each graduate student of Accounting Department of Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta. Various efforts carried out by Accounting Department such as providing supporting facilities and establishing cooperation with domestic and foreign agencies are parts of the process to create a conducive academic atmosphere and increase the achievement of academic community of Accounting Department of Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta. Being with realization that intelligence and people's well-being are the shared responsibilities. Thus, providing the best for the next generation is one responsibility that should be implemented to become excellent and Islamic in the world of accounting nationally and internationally. Accounting Department of Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta Excellent and Islamic Assalamualaikum. Hi there. I am Dr. Hassam, lecturer of accounting in international program of accounting IPAC QMA. The IPAC students are conditioned to be superior and have characters. The academic environment that shapes them among lectures, assignments, discussion, presentation using international language. Our guest lecture, professor, a visiting company, students exchange, credit transfer that make them global minded. I can speak Indonesian, but I always speak English as international when teach and discussion with the students to formalize them with the global atmosphere. The enthusiasm of students, the seriousness of program manager, and a conductive environment for sure IPAC alumni will be a superior in accounting profession with Islamic values. Yogyakarta Jiwa dari Pulau Jawa Kekayaan budaya yang terus terjaga melahirkan jiwa-jiwa bersahaja menciptakan para intelektual muda yang siap mendunia di sini terlahir persyarikatan Muhammadiyah organisasi Islam progresif yang bergerak di berbagai bidang kehidupan salah satunya pendidikan Atas gagasan Profesor Dr. Kahar Muzakir pada tanggal 1 Maret 1981, Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta hadir memperkaya kemampuan para intelektual muda, mewujudkan sarjana muslim berahlak mulia, cakap, percaya diri, mampu mengembangkan ilmu pengetahuan dan teknologi yang berguna bagi umat bangsa dan perkembangan dunia. Program Studi Akuntansi Fakultas Ekonomi UMG itu didirikan tahun 1993. Waktu itu didirikan e, dengan dua latar belakang minimal. Yang pertama adalah kebutuhan pasar. 
bahwa sektor industri Indonesia waktu itu masih terjadi kekurangan tenaga ahli akuntansi, akuntan. Kemudian yang kedua, secara sumber daya kita cukup memadai. Di bawah pengelolaan yang profesional menuju world class quality dengan mengusung visi menjadi program studi akuntansi yang berorientasi global dengan bertumpu pada penguatan iman dan takwa kepada Allah Subhanahu wa taala, penguasaan ilmu pengetahuan dan teknologi akuntansi serta menjadi pusat keunggulan yang bermanfaat bagi umat manusia. Dengan misi berperan aktif dalam proses pembangunan bangsa Pencerahan umat melalui Tridharma Perguruan Tinggi dan menghasilkan Yang and Global Accountant berakhlak mulia. Sejak tahun 2005, program studi akuntansi Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta telah terakreditasi A. Penciptaan atmosfer akademis dan pembentukan karakter kompetitif terus ditingkatkan. Sehingga, kepercayaan masyarakat terhadap program studi akuntansi Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta semakin tinggi, terlihat dari banyaknya jumlah peminat yang mendaftar. Pembelajaran di program studi akuntansi Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta didukung dengan fasilitas penunjang yang baik seperti sarana perpustakaan, tempat mahasiswa dapat mengakses referensi yang relevan dan memadai, seperti e-jurnal dan e-book. Ruang tata usaha tempat para mahasiswa mendapatkan pelayanan administrasi perkuliahan, serta wifi area, lab praktikum, Masjid Kyai Haji Ahmad Dahlan. Program studi akuntansi juga menaungi langsung himpunan mahasiswa akuntansi yang mampu menjadi wadah bagi mahasiswa untuk mengembangkan soft skill di bidang organisasi serta pengembangan diri. Selain didukung oleh fasilitas yang mumpuni, atmosfer akademis juga dibangun melalui tenaga pengajar yang telah tersertifikasi secara akademis maupun praktis yang terlibat aktif dalam kegiatan akademis dan profesi berskala nasional maupun internasional sebagai upaya pembaharuan ilmu akuntansi yang dimiliki. Proses pembelajaran juga mengacu pada kurikulum berbasis kompetensi yang merujuk pada KKNI atau Kerangka Kualifikasi Nasional Indonesia melalui pendekatan metode pembelajaran Student Center Learning, Discussion, Presentation, dan Problem Solving. Program studi akuntansi selalu berupaya mewujudkan terciptanya akuntan prospektif, yaitu profesional, responsif, personel confident, kreatif, trust, dan inovatif pada setiap mahasiswa lulusan program studi akuntansi Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta. Selama saya kuliah tiga setengah tahun di Prodi Akuntansi UMY, itu banyak hal yang bisa saya pelajari. Akuntansi manajemen, akuntansi keuangan, itu saya gunakan untuk mengatur um, biaya, mengatur laporan keuangan, dan yang paling penting adalah kita bisa mengetahui posisi bisnis kita. Apa yang saya dapatkan ketika kuliah di Prodi Akuntansi memberikan bekal yang cukup untuk saya uh, menjalankan uh, Pekerjaan juga merintis usaha sampai dengan sukses menuju persaingan global dengan tanpa mengesampingkan faktor dari Ridho Ilahi. Terima kasih. Berbagai upaya yang dilakukan program studi akuntansi Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta melalui pemberian fasilitas penuh.
see uh, Madam Nur Aini. May we start now? Yes, yes, sure. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everyone. This is the general lecture as our speaker, Professor Dr. Nur Aini binti Muhammad Arifin. If everyone are ready to start, I will open the session. Before start, I remind you to open your camera and mute your audio. The Honorable Professor Dr. Nur Aini binti Muhammad Arifin as a speaker of uh, as a speaker for today's event. Penny Nugraheni, SE, MSC, AK, CA, as a moderator for today's event. And the Honorable Accounting Lecturers and the participants who attended the today's general lecture. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala asrafil anbiya iwal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sabihi ajma'in amma ba'du. Praise your glorious presence of God Almighty who gave his guidance and mercy of Allah to all of us so that we can attend the general lecture event with the topic of Syariah Audit as the speaker, Professor Dr. Nur Aini binti Muhammad Arifin, organized by International Program of Accounting on this morning with the healthy state. Blessings and greetings. Let us always devote to our Lord, the Prophet Muhammad, who had brought us from the time of Jahiliyyah, heading into the era that is full of Inaya. Let me introduce myself. My name is Adi Nilsari as the Master of Ceremony. Here, I would like to show you about the agenda we have arranged today. The first agenda is opening. The second agenda is general lecture sessions. The next agenda is Q&A sessions. The next agenda is photo sessions. And the last agenda is closing. Let us start the first agenda that is opening by reciting Basmalah all together. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The next agenda is general lecture sessions with the topic of Syariah Audit. This event will be guided by the moderator, Miss Penny. Miss Penny is an accounting lecturer who expert in Syariah Audit. For Miss Penny, the time is yours. Uh, thank you, Mbak Adini. Can you hear my voice? Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, uh, good morning, all. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum. And the Honorable uh, Prof. Nuraini. Who are you, Prof? Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. Thank you yeah. for the invitation. Okay, yeah, you're welcome. We are uh, very happy that you can join to IPEC again. Yeah, uh, last last year, I if I'm not mistaken, yeah, you also uh, give a uh, uh, case lecture in IPEC, and also all of the lovely student, uh, my accounting student, Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin. Today, uh, international program of accounting IPEC UMY had a case lecture again. And the topic uh, today is Syariah audit. Yeah, for uh, for student accounting students, especially actually you will learn or you have learned uh, in our curriculum is about uh, Islamic accounting. Yeah, Islamic accounting, Islamic banking and finance, and also audit in general. So the question is, what is Syariah audit? Yeah, we have to term Syariah if we talk about Islamic accounting, Islamic financial institution, and also uh, it's about audit. So what is Syariah audit, and whether it is uh, it has it has differences with general uh, with audit in general, or uh, sometimes we call it as conventional audit. So Alhamdulillah, here we have. Uh, the speaker, uh, Prof. Noraini, and we can get new knowledge. Yeah, we can learn maybe the new knowledge for us about Syariah audit. Okay, before we start uh, our lecture, I will uh, read the CV. Yeah, uh, from Dr. Prof. Noraini. Yeah, Prof. Noraini uh, is okay. Is the lecturer in uh, accounting department, International Islamic uh, IUM, yeah, and she has uh, she hold uh, education in UK, all of in UK, yeah, 
Prof yeah. ya. Yeah. From PhD, Master and also Bachelor degree ya yeah. and and also Prof Nora ini uh, have experience uh, and many position in several institution. Ya, yeah. so uh, we hope we expect and it is good opportunity for us then to to or is to listen uh, the Prof Narini will share their experience, the knowledge about Sharia audit. Okay, uh, Prof, uh, maybe you have time one hours to explain to us, and then uh, we will continue to question and answer. Okay, Prof, time is yours. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Rabbi Shalli Sabi Wa Sallim Amri Wa Lukudat Milisan Ya Kaukali. Uh, thank you Master of Ceremony, uh, thank you uh, uh, Sister Penny for the kind introduction. Uh, uh, Alhamdulillah, I'm happy to be here today and to see all the students from uh, uh, Indonesia, from uh, UMY. So thank you for the invitation and inshallah I will try my best to share what I have at the moment. I'm still learning, so this is just a, a sharing session with all uh, with regard to the topic of Shara Audit. But you are free to ask questions later. If you have any question, then feel free to ask me any questions uh, on my presentation. And before that, uh, I would like also to wish Ramadan Karim to all. Uh, Salam Ramadan and hope that we have a blessed Ramadan this year. Uh, and hopefully this COVID-19 will go away soon so that we can have our normal life, our normal uh, conduct of the classes, etc. So, inshallah, I think uh, I just uh, would like to have uh, this session and I will try my best to complete in one hour. Uh, please stop me if I exceed my time later because when we start talking, then I normally forgot about the time. Yeah. So, uh, Miss Penny, so I really need your assistant later to remind me about the time, okay? Yeah. Okay, okay, let me share my slides uh, first. Uh, so, I can see that all of you are uh, accounting students. Yeah. And you have learned a lot about accounting also in your university. So, I'm here just to add on, on Shara Audit. Uh, based on what Miss Penny explained just now, you have learned about auditing, you have learned about financial accounting, financial reporting, management accounting, all accounting courses. Uh, but then maybe uh, this something this uh, a bit uh, different uh, because we are looking from the Sharia part uh, when we talk about this audit. So inshallah, this will be my plan uh, presentation today. Uh, okay. So I'll be covering the Shara audit in general, just general. But of course, I'll be focusing on the Malaysian practice at the end as well. How uh, Islamic financial institutions in Malaysia uh, conduct Shara audit in the, in the institutions. Okay. So hopefully by the end of this uh, session, uh, participants should be able to differentiate between conventional audit. I think I don't know why we use the term conventional, but to differentiate between the two audit, we just name it conventional versus Sharia, but this is just the audit that you have learned, the normal audit. So hopefully by the end of my session, uh, all of you will be able to differentiate between conventional audit and Sharia audit. And number two, to describe the importance of the Sharia audit. And number three, to explain the Sharia audit process. So that's what I plan to do within this one hour uh, time given to me. Okay. So as the introduction for my uh, session, uh, as what you have uh, known that Islamic financial institution, Islamic banks, Takaful, or if you want, if you have Islamic insurance, uh, they are a bit different as compared to the conventional financial institutions. And the main difference, uh, if you have taken also Islamic accounting, Islamic banking and finance, then you will also notice that uh, the issue of riba, garar, and maizir in the conventional uh, institutions or conventional financial institutions. So in the Islamic financial institution, they uh, no riba, no garar, and no maizir. And the activities and operation of the Islamic financial institutions must be Shara compliant. 
So in that situation, what we are arguing here, the existing audit or the commercial audit may not be sufficient for the Islamic French institutions. Because there's also a need to, to have Shara audit. And this Shara audit can also uh, provide independent assurance on the Shara compliance of the institutions. So later you will see like, how different between this Shara audit and the commercial audit. So this is just to introduce my session today. And just a quick uh, look on the Shara governance. So the Islamic Financial Services Board 2009 defined the Shara governance system in IFSB 10 as a set of institutional and organizational arrangements through which Islamic financial institutions to ensure that there is effective independent oversight of Shara compliance over the issuance of relevant Shara pronouncements, resolutions, and its dissemination, as well as an internal and annual Shara compliance review slash audit. So this definition implies that there will be Shara functions or organs in some financial institutions that oversee and ensure that all products and business activities in Islamic financial institutions always comply with Sharia. So in addition to the, to the need for the Sharia Supervisory Board, or in Indonesia, you will have the term as Dewan Pengawasan Sharia. So there's also need to have the functions uh, that we also will oversee and ensure that all products and business activities in the Islamic financial institution comply with Sharia. And this function, or one of these functions will be the Sharia audit function. Okay, so this is also part of the overall uh, Sharia governance of the Islamic financial institution. So we are referring for the for the Sharia audit is mainly for Islamic financial institutions, but what I can also see that the Shara audit can also be extended to any Islamic institutions, uh, zakat institutions, wakaf institutions. Uh, they can also uh, conduct Shara audit to ensure that all their activities are in compliance with Sharia. But in the case of Malaysia, also at the moment, uh, the Shara audit is only mandatory for Islamic financial institutions. But in the moving forward, we can also expect that. Uh, Zakat institution also to have the Shara audit as well as the Wakaf institutions and any other Islamic institution. For example, in Malaysia, we have Tabung Haji, uh, Hajj institution. So we, they can also have this Shara audit for their institutions. Okay, so before we go to the uh, to the Shara audit, uh, just to uh, recap a bit about the auditing that you have learned. I think this is just the revision to all the students uh, in the session today. Uh, what is auditing and what is the, the, the type of auditing that we have, for example. So I believe that this definition is not something new to all. So auditing is the accumulation and evaluation of evidence about information to determine and report on the degree of correspondence between the information and established criteria. So this is based on errors 2008. So meaning that when we talk about auditing, there be a evidence to check okay and then the evidence will be checked with certain criteria okay when we talk about the uh, the, the financial statement audit then that criteria will be the accepted gender accepted accounting principles the uh, IFRS international financial reporting standards or Indonesia you have your own accounting standards so that will be the criteria that will be uh, referred when the auditors uh, conduct the audit. Okay, So there'll be information and established criteria, and then there'll be accumulation and evaluating the evidence. And this will be done by competent, independent person because the auditor must be independent. They should not have conflict of interest. They should not uh, have any, uh, any relationship with the, the auditee. And then at the end of the, uh, the process, uh, the auditor, external auditor or internal auditor will prepare the audit report. Because when we talking, when we talk about auditing, we'll be having these two type of auditing: external auditing as well as internal auditing. Okay. Okay. So for the external auditing, or uh, when we, we, I mean, when the institutions uh, engage the external auditors, uh, they are conducting what we have the financial statement audit. 
So the financial statement audit is actually to obtain reasonable assurance about whether the financial report as a whole is free from material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error, thereby enabling the auditor to express an opinion on whether the financial report is prepared in all material aspects, in, in all material respects, in accordance with an applicable financial reporting framework. So this is accordance to Gay and Simonet 2012. So this actually what is happening in also the Islamic financial institutions, where external auditor also will be engaged and will give the opinion that there's no material misstatement, there's no errors, and the financial statements are in accordance with the applicable financial reporting framework. So that is, is actually the scope of the external auditor for the financial statement audit. Of course, you also have the IT audit, you also have the, the other type of audit to be also conducted by the Islamic financial institutions, as well as the uh, institutions in general. Okay, uh, then at the end of the process, uh, the external auditor will provide the opinion. So the opinion will be normally in the form of true and fair view. And then that will be, uh, uh, will enhance the credibility of the financial statements because I think the, the, uh, the users will want to also uh, uh, know that the financial statements are uh, free from the errors, free from matter misstatements and so on. So that's actually the, also the job of the external auditor to provide the opinion. Okay. However, uh, based on the opinion also will not give assurance to the future viability of the financial institution, nor, nor can the user assume as to the efficiency and effectiveness with which the management has conducted the affairs of Islamic financial institution. So what you need to remember here, even though the external auditor has given that true and fair view, meaning that there's no problem, no errors, no material misstatement and so on. But that what is just to give assurance on the financial statements, the existing financial statement or whatever reported for the previous period. But that will not really provide assurance that the financial statement is going to be sustained in the future. Okay, that one is not part of the, uh, the scope of that external auditor. So an audit is designed to provide reasonable assurance that the financial statement taken as a whole are free from misstatement. So this is what you have learned also in your auditing class. And true and fair, the financial statements are not misleading, the financial statements do not contain any misstatements, the financial statements are prepared on the basis of established criteria. So if these three are there in the financial statements, then the external auditor will give true and fair view without any issue to be raised back to the to the management. But then if there is some issue, then the, audit, the external auditor will, will ask for the response from the management. Okay, so that's be the, the normal audit or what I use the term conventional auditing in my presentation. And the report of the auditors and independent assurance of the integrity and fairness of financial information and financial statements audit and opinion as to whether the financial statements are prepared in accordance with an identified financial reporting framework and standards. And since the transactions are too many, evidence will be accumulated on a sampling basis, thus the auditors only express reasonable assurance. So this is what we have the term reasonable assurance, the external auditor will normally give only reasonable assurance because they only uh, conduct the audit based on sample based on sampling basis and they just select the sample and then from that sample the auditors will, will conduct the, the audit. Okay. okay and this just some of the external auditors of Islamic banks uh, the, the external audit nothing to do with the auditor at, the, at this stage this just the external auditors the one that auditing the financial statement that I have discussed earlier so in Bahrain, we have Al Baraka, we have Bahrain Islamic Bank, Shamil Bank, Quick Finance House, Al Capita Investment Bank. And most of the Islamic banks in Bahrain are audited by EY, as well as PwC. In Saudi Arabia, also EY dominate the Islamic banks in Saudi. So Al Baraka, uh, Arachi also audited, uh, also audited by EY. In Malaysia also, we have a uh, few uh, big four that are uh, auditing the Islamic banks. For example, Bank Islam Malaysia Berhad are audited by PwC, 
Bank Muamalat, EY, RHB Islamic, PWC, OCBC, KPMG. So they're just a few of the Islamic bank in Malaysia that uh, use the big four for their external audit. And Indonesia, for example, they also have EY and also uh, Dolly Bambang, Sulis Lianto and Dadang and Ali. So that will be the auditing firm that audit the, the Islamic banks in Indonesia. Okay, so that will be the external audit, meaning that uh, the external auditor will audit the country statements. Okay, if now we go to this internal audit, okay, internal audit also there in all the institutions, including Islamic financial institutions, the existing one or the current one. And mainly the, the mission of the internal audit come from this Institute of Internal Auditors Malaysia when we talk about Malaysian perspective. And they have this international professional practice framework. And I will assume this also applicable to other countries. They also have their own Institute of Internal Auditors that also look into this internal audit. So the, the mission of that uh, internal audit is to provide independent objective assurance and consulting services. Design, designed to add value and improve the organization's operations. It helped the organization accomplish its objectives and to evaluate and improve the effectiveness of governance, risk management and control processes, and it helped by bringing a systematic discipline approach. So this will be more on the internal control part. When we talk about internal audit, more on auditing or checking the internal control, whether the internal control is in place, effective, and so on. Okay, and this will be done by internal auditors. I mean, the part of the uh, staff of that institutions. So they are the one who will be conducting internal audit. And later we will see that how this uh, internal audit can also relate to Sharia audit. I mean, based on the practice of some countries, the internal auditors will be the one who conduct Sharia audit. But some they can also outsource or uh, get the external party to conduct the Sharia audit. Okay. So what you can see from here, the, the Sharia audit also will come from this internal audit part. So there will be a, a requirement here to have this uh, Shara audit, okay? Because external financial auditors, as what we have discussed, are only legally responsible to audit conventional financial and operational system, processes, activities, policies, etc. And Shara supposedly board, for example, Dewan Pengawasan Syariah in Indonesia, will only focus on Shara compliance on products and policies. Internal auditors only focus on internal control and operational matters. Thus, there is a need for Shara audit to provide reasonable assurance on, of Shara compliance for the activities in Islamic branch institutions. So you will see the link here. External auditor normally just will be focusing on one of them will be fancy statements. But for the Shara Sports Board, in the case of Indonesia or in the case of Malaysia, we have Shara committee. They will just focus on Shara compliance and they are not conducting the audit. They don't check. I mean, they don't really go to the ground and really assess whether everything is in compliance with Sharia. Okay. And internal auditors just focusing on internal control. So they are not also doing the audit. Okay. The Sharia audit. Okay. But then there is a gap there and that gap will be, uh, will be uh, done by including the, the Sharia audit uh, in the Islamic French institution. Uh, and this Shara audit can provide reasonable assurance of Shara compliance for the activities in Islamic financial institutions. So what the, the, the Shara auditor will do is to also uh, have the same scope as internal auditors, but they are focusing on the Shara, checking on Shara compliance rather than checking on the internal control, checking on financial statements and so on, the normal financial statement, whether it comply with the uh, accepted accounting principles or not at the end. Okay, so that what will happen for the for the needs for Shara audit. And I will try uh, my best here to explain this Shara audit from the three lines of defense. Okay, so the Institute of Internal Auditors 2013 recommended the three lines of defense model to represent an approach to, pro, uh, to represent an approach to providing structure around risk management and internal controls within an organization by defining roles and responsibilities in different areas and relationship between those different areas. So 
I assume that you also uh, may come across this when you learn audit, talking about this uh, three lines of defense. Okay. So the three lines of defense is actually in the gen in the conventional part. We have the, the first line of defense, second line of defense, and also the third line of defense. So the first line of defense, normally the, the business unit itself, the owner of that unit. So if you talk about an institution, where we have uh, several departments or several units. For example, they are also marketing department. They are also uh, uh, product department. They also have the IT department. They also have the uh, human resource department. Uh, where else they also have maybe the, the legal department, etc., etc. So this is what we are referring to the business unit. So at, at the at the first line of defense, they also will be checking whether everything is in order or not. If you talk about the general audit, okay, general risk management rather than the, for the sharia part. So the the owner will also confirm that their department uh, also uh, manage managing the risk properly. So that will be at the first line of defense, okay. And then at the second line of defense, we will have also compliance and also risk management to also check that unit, whether everything also in order, uh, effective and so on. So that would be the second or defense, maybe a bit uh, independent, but not too independent as compared to the third line of defense, but they also will ensure that the risk also be managed. Okay, whatever risk, we're talking about general risk here. Then only we move the, to the third line of defense where the internal audit will go in and also will provide the independent assurance that everything also in order. So this will be the normal three law of defense in the institutions uh, managing the normal risk. Uh, nothing to do with Sharia here. This is actually the existing three law of defense that managing the, the, the normal risk. And what we can also expect from these three, law, three lines of defense, when the first law of defense is effective, meaning that the unit, the owner will really uh, checking and managing their unit to ensure that all the risks are mitigated. Then when the second law of defense conduct the compliance or do the risk management, and then when the third law of defense also uh, conduct the audit, uh, most likely they will not be able to see any findings because the first line of defense is already effective. But this will not normally be the case because normally the owner will uh, overlook or will not be able to, to, to see some of the uh, non-compliance. Uh, and because of that, there is a need to have the second line of defense to also assist in that matter. And then the third line of defense also will, will provide the whole uh, uh, assurance that all the risks are managed or need to ratify some of the findings. So this will be the, the normal three of defense. And we can also apply this to the Sharia functions. So for Islamic function institutions, in addition to the normal uh, three line of defense, they can also relate that to the to the to the Shara function that they have. So, for example, the first law of defense will be whatever that similar to the to my previous example, but now they are managing the Sharah non-compliant risk. Okay, and then second law of defense also will be managing the Sharah non-compliant risk because we are talking about Sharah function, so they are managing the Sharah non-compliant risk in this respect. So, for the second law of defense, normally we need the Sharah review uh, or Sharah compliance uh, function and also Sharah risk management function to also ensure that the Sharah non-compliant risks are mitigated. Then only we will have this third line of defense, Sharah audit. So Sharah audit is at the third line of defense. So Sharah audit will provide the assurance that everything will be also in Sharah compliant. So there's no Sharah non-compliant uh, risk, for example, in the case of uh, Islamic financial institutions. So this is what I can <coughs> share with you, how the three lines of defense can also be related to the, to the Shara functions. So now we move to the Shara audit. Okay. 
So Shara Odi will be at the third line of defense, meaning that the, the most independent one uh, to do the checking on Shara compliant. So Shara Odi is refers to a function that provides an independent assessment on the quality and effectiveness of the Islamic financial institutions, internal control, risk management systems, governance processes, as well as the overall compliance of the Islamic financial institutions, operations, business, affairs, and activities with Sharia. So that will be the, the role of Sharia audit, more towards uh, ensuring that Sharia compliance is in place lah, for the Islamic financial institutions. Okay. And then normally Shara Supervisory Board or Shara Committee uh, really uh, need the assistance of this uh, Shara audit to, to, to ensure or to do the checking that everything is Shara compliant. So the idea of the day, Shara Committee or Shara Supervisory Board will be able to provide the assurance that this institution comply with Sharia. Of course, we will expect during the Shara audit, there can be also Shara non-compliant events. But that Shara no event should should will should be rectified and should not recur again in the following period. So there must be a system in place uh, to ensure that whatever uh, detected during the Shara audit will need to be rectified and not to 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 have that again in the future. So if that particular Shara audit function uh, is effective, then I believe that the Shara uh, scores report the higher authority in the institution when it comes to giving the Shara compliance of the institution will be more comfortable uh, to provide the assurance that all the activities, the operations, the business, affairs and activities of these Islamic financial institutions comply with Sharia. Okay. So the, the role of Shara audit, number one, is to assess the effectiveness of the Shara oversight function and reporting structure, to ascertain the degree of compliance with the Shara principles requirements, to ascertain, assess, and test the system of internal controls of the institution's activities and operations, to ensure the workflow procedure make the most efficient use of resources, and number five, to ensure the prominence on addressing any identified Shara non-compliant activities, events, and transitions. So mainly, what you can see from this is that the Shara audit is uh, really uh, following what the internal auditors have done. More on the internal control, more on the uh, oversight function to check on the event oversight function. Uh, but the only difference in here will be for the Sharia partner because the normal internal auditor will not check in on Sharia compliance, Sharia assessment and so on. But the Sharia auditor will, will conduct that particular uh, audit to ensure compliance with Sharia. Okay. So they should have this uh, procedure. To, uh, number one, to establish the audit methodology to assess the risk profile and vulnerabilities of the each auditable area. Number two, to generate audit plan for the assignments to be performed. Number three, to establish clear documented audit programs that provide guidance to the internal auditors in gathering information, auditing procedure, and also audit assessment. And number four, to communicate results to the board and Shara committee or Shara supervisory board through an audit report detailing the audit findings and recommendations for ratification measures as well as the auditee's responses and action plans. So this will be uh, the role of Shara audit function in, in the Islamic fund institutions. So before they can uh, conduct the Shara audit, they have to start with the audit methodology and they come up with the audit plan and then later audit program and then they conduct the audit and communicate the result to the board and also the Shara Sports Report or Shara Committee. And in the report, they have to also uh, include the audit findings, what they have found during the audit, what are their recommendations for rectification measures, as well as what will be the responses from the auditees and the, the future plan, what they have to do, uh, the timeline to 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 uh, to rectify the issue and so on. So that will be the uh, the the role of the Shara auditor in the Islamic financial institutions. 
Okay, the scope of the Shara audit will be uh, normally, I think that will not be uh, for the uh, the only one. Uh, the audit of financial statements can also be part of the scope of Shara audit. Compliance audit on the structure, organization structure, people, process and information technology application systems. Uh, review of adequacy of the Shara governance process. Okay, so this will be in general the, the, the scope of Shara audit. So number one, we talk about audit of financial statements, meaning that we are not going to duplicate the job of external auditor because as what we discussed in the beginning of my presentation, the external auditor will be the one who, who are doing audit of financial statements. But the Shara audit will also audit the financial statements, but to ensure that the financial statements are in compliance with Sharia. So the Shara auditor will not going to, to, to check whether the financial statements are compliant with the uh, accepted accounting principles or not in this case, because that will be the job of the external auditors to do that. But what the Shara auditor will do is to ensure that the financial statements also comply with Sharia. How we can do that? We have to check whether any terminology that are not Shara compliant in the financial statement, for example. Uh, for example, in the South financial institutions, they are not supposed to have a loan except for court. Lah. But you know, most of the time in Malaysia, uh, some financial institutions, Islamic banks, do not offer court to their customers. They only offer court with the free interest loan to their staff. So the word borrowing also should not be there. The word interest also should not be in the financial statement. The word insurance also should not be in the financial statement, for example. So this will be also the job of the Shara auditor to also check whether financial statements are free from this Shara non-compliant terminology. That can be part of the audit of financial statements. And they can also audit on zakat. Uh, because zakat also will not be checked by the external auditor. The external auditor will not check whether the zakat has been computed correctly, whether the zakat has been disbursed uh, uh, time on, on time or not to the, to the asnaf. So this also can be part of the audit of financial statement. The Shara auditor can also ensure that zakat has been computed according to the correct uh, uh, formula, uh, all the amount that should not be uh, zakatable also has been uh, adjusted. And then when the institution, some financial institution uh, pay, uh, uh, having zakat, uh, uh, and then uh, whether the zakat is, is going to be dispersed uh, quickly or not to the to the asnaf or they just keep in their in their accounts for many many years so that will be not in compliance with sharia at the end so this also can be part of this audit of financial statement that the shara auditor can focus because the internal auditors external no auditors will not check on that external no auditor will not check on the terminology because external no auditor will not really bother whether any loan any interest terminology in the financial statement the external auditor also will not check whether zakat has been done or be computed correctly, whether zakat has been dispersed to the asnaf or dispersed to anyone. So that is not, not part of the, the job of the external auditors. Internal auditor also will not check on that because the internal auditor will only focusing on the internal control, whether everything follow the SOP, the, the existing uh, guidelines for the institution and so on. So this is the thing that I can see the importance of Shara Auditor to, to really audit the financial statement on the Shara compliant. Okay. And then number two is to audit the, the structure, the people, process, and also the system. So the structure is to ensure that the structure also comply with Sharia. Whatever product that being offered to the customer, the product also comply with Sharia. Not only on the I mean, approval, because normally what you will see the 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 product has been has been approved by the Shara supervisory board or Shara committee, but then when the when the staff offered that to the to the to the customer, they don't follow that process or that structure. Uh, so this is where the execution stage, the Shara auditor need to check, and the people whether the staff are competent or not, whether the staff can explain about Islamic finance, Islamic banking or the staff just say that Islamic Bank and Portugal Banks are the same. So this is something that we can also check about the people, the process, the system, also whether the system are Shara compliant, whether the, the term used in the system when they print the receipt, they print the doc, the the, uh, the, uh, the uh, agreement, they also, I mean, all terms, all terminologies are also Shara compliant. So 
and then whether they follow the sequence. So this is actually something that Shara Auditor can focus. And the last one is also to check on the Shara Governor process, whether the Shara Committee meetings are there, whether how many meetings per year, whether there's any reporting, how they report any independence, whether any conflict of interest. So this will be something that the, the Shara Auditor can also focus when it comes to the scope of Shara Audit. Okay, so, okay, sorry. Uh, Okay, the next one I have the references. So the references can be the Shara rulings and decisions. So as far as the uh, external auditors are concerned, when they conduct the external audit, they refer to the uh, accounting standards, whether all the financial statements are in compliance with accounting standards or not, whatever accounting standard in the country, in Indonesia, then we'll be referring to the accounting standard in Indonesia. In Malaysia, we are referring to the Malaysian financial reporting standards. But when come to Shara Auditor, when Shara Auditor conduct the audit, the references is no longer the accounting standards. But the references are now the Shara rulings and decision by the Shara Sports Report, for example, the one pengasuh syariah, or high authority on syariah in the respective countries. For example, in Malaysia, we have Shara Advisory Council in Malaysia. And other Shara manuals. So they have to ensure that whatever implemented in that institution comply with syariah. And with syariah, then need to refer to all the rulings and decisions by the Sharia uh, authorities. Okay, so that would be the references. And then uh, the methodology, normally now we are moving to a risk-based audit rather than normal audit. So how to do the risk-based audit? The, the, the step need to be followed here. Number one, to identify the audit universe first. And then breaking the audit universe into auditable units. So we are talking about the Islamic financial institution or Islamic bank. The whole... Uh, uh, the whole thing in that Islamic bank are the audit universe. But then they can also break the universe into the auditable unit, for example, products uh, or maybe departments, or maybe they can decide, uh, I mean, uh, based on the institution, how they're going to break the universe into auditable areas. And then, uh, then after that, they're going to do risk identification, risk assessment, uh, risk scoring, to, to, to know which of the area which is more risk, risky or high risk compared to the lower risk. Okay, then they will pre prepare the risk based uh, internal audit plan. Okay, and that plan will cater the higher risk area every month, I mean, every period. So, meaning that the, the area that under the higher risk will be audited every year. But the area which is not really a higher risk, medium or maybe lower risk, then maybe that will be audited every three years or every five years. So they don't have to focus uh, or to conduct share audit for the area every period. Then after they have identified the area to be audited, the plan, the share audit plan, then they do the execution, to conduct the audit and then the reporting. So this is where what I can see that risk-based audit is more uh, effective as compared to normal audit because when we talk about sample when you do sample based on normal audit then you just take any sample but when the sample is done based on risk-based audit then that will be more effective because the share audit will focus on the high risk area so the sample be selected based on high risk area rather than just a random sample so that's what we can do when we talk about this uh, risk-based audit okay so the benefit you can also read here, they can also be the conducting efficient audit activities, identifying the risk appropriately. Then we also have affirmative cost benefit impacts, fulfilling the stakeholders expectations and focusing on the most significant and risky auditable areas. So rather than we just audit anything, then at the end of the day, no findings, everything okay, because we are not focusing on the high risk area it's good to move towards risk-based audit. Even the normal audit, the internal audit now also has moved to this risk-based audit, including the external audit. So now I think in the in the in the uh, in the practice, they are talking about risk-based audit rather than just compliance audit. Just yes, no, yes, no, but more to this risk-based audit. Okay. So now I think my last part is on the share audit process for my presentation today. So when we talk about share audit process, uh, 
similar to the normal audit process, I think in the internal audit process, external audit process, we also will have these four important processes. Uh, Shara audit also follow the same process, but of course the nature of each process will be a bit different if we compare with the other audits. Okay, so the first process will be planning, second execution, third reporting, and number four will be follow up. And this also the process done in the external audit that you have learned in your classes or in internal audit as well. They also follow these four processes. So this is nothing new like for the for the audit but then it's for the share audit in this case. So at the first process planning, uh, the share auditor need to have understanding about the operation in the institutions. If the bank, then they have to understand what is actually happening in that bank. What are the products? What are the size operation, the location, branches, subsidiaries, and also division. So in general, I think they have to have the understanding of the, of the institution before they can conduct the audit. And if talking about risk-based audit that I have mentioned to you earlier, then they have to do the risk assessment of all this uh, uh, area, okay? Number two is properly documented, including the sample selection criteria and says take into consideration complexity and frequency of transition. So this will also be done at the planning stage. And then they also will perform normally in the last quarter of the financial year end. Okay, because they pre prepare for the next year audit. So that this need to be done in the last quarter of the financial year end. Perform Sharon risk assessment because we're talking about risk-based audit. So the risk assessment will be done on the audit universe and develop Sharon risk profile, Sharon audit program, and determine the number of audit assignment to be conducted throughout the next 12 months based on risk factors, audit resources available. So when they want to plan for the next year, they also need to look at how many audit assignment to be conducted and based on the resources they have, how many auditors they have, how many hours they have to conduct the whole uh, assignment. So they need to really link this tool uh, when they prepare the plan for the SHARA audit. And they have to table to SHARA committee or SHARA supervisory report for endorsement and audit committee for approval and adoption. So the final authority to approve the Shara audit plan still the audit committee. But then because we are talking about Shara audit, then Shara committee or Shara supervisory board need to endorse first the Shara audit plan before that can be tabled to the audit committee for the approval. So the Shara audit plan must be approved, must be endorsed by the Shara committee. Okay, and then they also can design, design the Shara audit program during this, uh, this uh, planning. Uh, Share audit program just to, to help the auditor later to conduct the share audit. So a manual based document that clearly spells out step by step and based on share audit procedures and policies when offering Islamic financial services. So they can refer to SOP, standard operating procedures, product manuals, accounting standards, MSB, IOF, or Indonesian standard, regulatory requirement in the countries, and audit program is designed to audit a particular area of the overall scope of audit. And common to have several audit programs for various departments and common to have audit program for each product offered. So each product may have different audit program. When I refer to each product here, we can refer to, for example, uh, if you talk about Islamic banks, they may have uh, uh, personal, personal financing. They also may have home financing. And each of these product also will be based on certain Shara contract, for example, uh, Mudarabah, Musharakah, Murabaha, Ijarah, etc. So meaning that the audit program can also be done for each of these product. And what are the Shara requirements for, for example, for Ijarah? What are the Shara requirements for Ijarah? So when the, when the Shara auditor conduct the audit letter, they can just follow whatever in the program. And they can just, that can ease them or can assist them in conducting an effective Shara audit. So internal auditors and Shara department within the Islamic financial institution must work closely with Shara supervisory board, Shara committee to ensure Shara compliant of Islamic financial activities. So that be part of the planning. This is the example of Shara audit program. Uh, for example, in this case, the audit area is department ABC and the audit sub area is to audit product A in the department ABC. So this will be the key audit objective to ensure the product are in compliance with ruling issued by Shara Committee, Shara Sports Board or the bank, 
to verify the sharaf contract legal documentation, product execution and operation compared with the ruling issued by the sharaf committee, sharaf police board and high authority and to ensure proper monitoring mechanism have been established of, for effective management of sharaf non risk. So meaning that when the sharaf audit being conducted on this product A, uh, they have to ensure they are checking A, B and C here. Okay, so and references in, in this case, for example, in the case of Malaysia, Islam, Malaysian Islamic Bank, then they are referring to Bank Negara Malaysia guideline, Shara committee, guideline or Shara Committee's ruling. And then the audit period may be 1st January, 31st December. Okay, so each of the uh, audit area can have its own audit program. So second stage is the execution stage. So after the planning has been uh, done, and has getting has been has been uh, approved by the audit committee and also agreed by the shara committee or shara supervisory board then only the shara auditor can conduct the audit so the execution stage is where the shara auditor conduct the shara audit okay so at the execution stage then the, the shara auditor will go to the to the ground and to understand the management awareness commitment and compliance control procedures for adherence to the sharia auditing of contract and standard operating procedures, auditing information and reports such as circulars, minutes of meeting, operating and franchise reports, policies and reports, etc. Interviewing relevant personnel, observing processes and operations, auditing profit competition and distribution, zakat competition and distribution, penalty competition and manual distribution, etc. And assessing the adequacy of internal control system for share compliance. So this is the execution stage where the Shara auditor will go to the departments, to the units uh, to really check on the Shara compliance. So depend on what are the audit area, what are the objectives, then they will do the Shara audit based on that audit objectives. Okay, and this can be some of the examples, uh, the things that can be done during the execution stage. Then the next stage, stage uh, the next process will be the reporting process so after the uh, the shara audit has been conducted then they also have the findings from that shara audit then the next process is to do the reporting okay so the reporting here uh, the shara auditor will report the shara non compliant or potential shara non compliant events activities transactions if any if none then they can say no there's no shara non compliance there's no finding or they have finding but nothing to do with Sharia, just operational uh, labs, for example. Okay, highlight the causal factor that lead to that Sharia non compliance. So, what are the causal factors that need to be also put in the Sharia audit report? Assess the degree of risk and impact to the bank as a whole. Recommend corrective actions and improvements. Suggest the timeline for rectifications and conclude that the state of internal control system and risk management process. So this will be the, the reporting part of the Shara audit process to report what they have, I mean, what the Shara auditors have obtained during the execution. And what normally can also happen here, the Shara auditor can also present later to the Shara Sports Report or Shara Committee then that there is no findings. And if that happened, normally I have, I mean, I'm a bit cautious in that uh, report because if there's no findings, uh, they can be either the institution is very good, they don't have any Sharah non compliant at all, they are able to manage everything in order, or the Sharah audit is not effective, then the Sharah auditor is not able to detect any Sharah non compliant. So, normally, when the Sharah auditor present to us and mention to the Sharah committee, for example, there's no findings, I normally ask back the question how you conduct Shara audit. Can you explain to us how you conduct Shara audit? And are you sure that you have done an effective Shara audit that lead to that particular uh, report? Okay, because uh, most of the time we can expect some findings lah when it comes to the Shara audit because there can be always errors done by the people. Because the Shara non-compliant uh, event can arise due to these uh, four, uh, four, yeah, four causal factors. Number one is people. Number two be the process. Number three is the system. And number four will be the external event. So mainly, I think we can expect, normally there can be some uh, causal factor from people 
that lead to syarah non-compliant. Unless the people are really perfect, lah. there's no errors. But I believe that human errors still can arise lah, during the, the transactions. Okay, So that can be part of this uh, syarah audit process on the reporting part. And the final one, we have this follow-up. Okay, so after the reporting has been uh, presented, uh, has been has been completed, meaning that the Shara audit report has been presented to the Shara committee, Shara supervisory report, and then later to the audit uh, audit committee for the final uh, reporting. Because what I forgot to mention here, the Shara auditor reporting line will be the audit committee, but then they still have to report to the Shara committee or Shara supervisory report because we are talking about Shari part in the audit. But the final authority to approve the plan just now, as well as the report, will still be the audit committee of the institutions. Similar to the internal audit, similar to the external audit, lah, the normal or conventional audit. Okay, so after this has been done, then the final stage will be the follow-up stage. So in the follow-up stage, what will happen here, uh, the Sharon Risk Management will track the ratification effort using the Sharon Non-Compliance Tracking Report. Because assuming that during the, the report just now, we have Sharah non compliant events. So now it's the follow up. So the Sharah risk management also need to check whether that SNC event has been rectified. And what are the, the, the efforts done to ensure that that particular event will not occur again in the future. Because we don't want, we don't want to see in the next audit, the same findings also will be tabled to the to the Sharah Committee or Sharah Sports Report. So there must be some uh, mechanisms taken by the by the uh, by the institutions to ensure that whenever they detect Sharah non-compliant, they also must have uh, effective rectification uh, efforts to ensure that that SNC will not occur again in the future. Okay. And then the Shara Committee, Shara Supervisory Board, uh, Operational Risk Control Committee will oversee the ratification efforts. So every time there be Shara uh, Committee or Shara Supervisory Board meeting, then they also need to update the the, the members uh, whether the uh, whether that particular uh, incidents or that particular events has been rectified or not. Okay, and the Shara Audit also need to. Uh, to follow up will be conducted on monthly basis and the ratification status will be presented to audit committee. So what you can see when we talk about the Shara audit uh, report earlier, the, the reporting part, they also need to put the timeline for the issue because when we talk about the yeah, when we talk about the, the findings, the finding can also be maybe a bit high risk, lower risk or medium risk. So maybe the one that got the high Sharah non-compliant uh, rating, uh, they require a longer time to rectify. But the the one that is medium uh, rating maybe uh, a lower a lower uh, timeline, then uh, maybe medium also in the in the middle. But then uh, whenever there is a Sharah supervisory board meeting or Sharah committee meeting, then the Sharah audit Sharah auditor also need to, to update the, the members whether any of this uh, ratification uh, plan has been closed, meaning they has been ratified fully or still in progress. Uh, this, they have some issues also to, to, comp to, to rectify, for example. So they need to, to really uh, update to the, to the members uh, during the meeting in the follow-up uh, process. Okay, So that will be the, the Shara audit process on the follow-up. Okay, so that will be the four process that you need to understand when come to the share audit. The, the first one will be the planning and the execution, reporting, and then finally the follow up. This will be some example of the share audit findings. Okay, uh, the, the first one we can have here details of good purchase for Murabah currency not proper recorded. So if you learn about Murabah, uh, because you need to understand Murabah for, for the share auditor to, to, to check whether this has been done in order or not. And this can be just minor because this will not uh, will not uh, invalidate the akad uh, just to 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 add to the to, to the details and then send this to the customer for the details for example 
uh, or record that properly later. So that can be just minor. Number two, sales and purchase agreement contradict the share requirements of BBA by Bitama Agile. So if you have learned by BBA, you should know that they must, uh, they have here is the buyback issue, uh, uh, sale and purchase with the same person. So if the, the sequence is not in the correct order there, then that can lead to major share non-compliant. So first bank will buy from the customer and then later bank will have to sell to the customer. So they will purchase first and then sell. But then if the, the other way around, then that will lead to major share non-compliant and invalidate the account. And then number three, overcharge the customer penalty and the policy is not accordance with the service provider board requirement. So this can also be maybe just moderate. Contrary the ITAP contract that in case of asset defect, customer will duly, duly charge the maintenance cost. So this also ijara summa albay. Uh, can also be moderate and the date of trading is after the disbursement for personal financing under Tawarok. So this is actually major. So minor, major, moderate, everything here needs to be defined properly by the institution. So we cannot just simply say this minor, major, moderate. But before that, the risk indicators must be uh, must be in place. How you decide on minor, major, moderate. Maybe minor, there's no ACAD. I mean, ACAD still valid. There's no uh, financial impact. There's no recognition of income. Major, you will emulate, invalidate the ACAD and also the uh, the income to be channeled to charity. So this needs to be defined properly by the institutions. Okay. Important share governance. I think this is actually just to ensure that everything in place. So I have talked about that earlier. Share governance to ensure that the management of share non-compliant. Non okay. In Malaysia, just a quick one. Just I just need about maybe a quick one to complete this. Uh, we have been negara Malaysia share governance policy document 2019. Uh, effective day 1st April 2020, except paragraph 12.5, which is on the tenor of the Shara Committee, is only effective on 1st April 2023. Because now in Malaysia, Shara Committee can only be nine, nine years. Right? If you are, you cannot be renewed anymore in the same institution if you are already there for nine years. So that's paragraph 12.5. So the objective of Shara Government policy document in Malaysia on uh, Benegara part is to have aspect, effective Shara Government arrangements. And then they strengthen oversight accountabilities on the board, Shara committee, and also other key organs, and to promote strong Shara compliance culture within IFI. And they also need to have these four functions Shara review, uh, sorry, Shara risk management, Shara review, and Shara audit. Three, so three functions review, uh, risk, and also audit. And this way you can also translate later into that three lines of defense. Okay. And then they also have to ensure. The institution must have sufficient resources for the control functions, including putting in place adequate number of officers within the appropriate competency and experience. So the institution must have a good number of staff to do these functions. Okay. So this according to Malaysian one and what Shara non is, I think Malaysia, uh, Negara Malaysia Shara Gona Policy Document 2019 has defined Shara non risk as the risk of legal or regulatory sanction, financial loss or non-financial implications including reputational damage which an Islamic financial institution may suffer arising from the failure to comply with the rulings of the Shara Udri Council of Ben Negara Malaysia, standards on Shara matters issued by Ben Negara Malaysia or decision or advice of the Shara Committee. So whatever not in compliance with these requirements will be Shara non-compliant. Okay, as my conclusion here, uh, to, to do the Shara auditing, uh, to, to have a good Shara auditing, the following issues are crucial. Number one, the resources. Who are qualified to conduct share audit? Number two, the approach. What is our approach to audit? Product-based, operation-based or branch-based? Number three, the procedures. How many procedures to test for each product or for each operation? Number four is evidence. How much evidence needed to be satisfied? And number five, time and cost. How much time available and cost to be incurred? So in the end, what I can conclude from this one that uh, share auditor need to also be uh, equipped with the right knowledge for them to conduct share audit and the share auditor must have uh, knowledge in sharia uh, it's also good if they can also have a uh, share background but what i can also see that the those who have accounting background but we have but with sharia uh, knowledge and they can also understand all the product in islamic institutions all the share contracts there they are able to conduct a good share audit because they have learned how to conduct audit in general 
but then they also add with the sharah knowledge that they learn in also the university and I'm assuming also in Islamic accounting or Islamic finance, uh, the student in UMY also have, have learned all these uh, sharah contracts. So with that two knowledge, if we combine, then I always believe that this group of people can become a good sharah auditors because you need accounting and also sharia to, to do sharah audit. Okay, so with that, I will end my presentation. Uh, I'm not sure whether I have exceeded, I think two minutes exceed my time. So thank you very much for your attention. I'm happy to accept any question from the floor. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Prof. Noraini. A very clear explanation. Uh, it's especially uh, about uh, Sharia audit, although maybe some of the participants here uh, not yet take the what is the subject of Islamic banking because uh, we offer it in the third semester, yeah. but I'm not sure actually. Yeah, okay, so uh, all of the students, uh, you have uh, listened about the explanation, maybe you have question. You can ask by uh, raising your hand, or also you can write uh, your question in the chat room. Okay, anyone want to ask the speaker? Maybe you can ask also in mixed language. It's okay, yeah, Prof. Yeah. <laughs> you can. Bahasa Indonesia, and I'm trying to understand as well. So. I can also try yeah. to speak in Bahasa Malaysia if I, you want me to ask me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, who is Raisen? We Okay, and the first question uh, from Mbak Widya Nurul Jana, yeah? Yes, yes. Okay. So, yeah, uh, Mbak Widya. Okay, I want to ask the questions. Uh, the question is, how can the Sharia audit maintain their existence? Because as we can see, most of the company are embracing the conventional audit. Thank you, Miss. Okay. 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 Uh, Prof, uh, directly answer the question or you will wait for some question? Uh, depend. I'm, I'm okay with all the choices. So it's up to the, to the moderator. <laughs> Okay, okay, maybe one by one, yeah. Okay, so, okay. Yeah, you can ask for. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if I understand correctly the answer, you're asking how the Shara audit can sustain uh, due to the existence of the commercial audit in the practice, is it? Yes, yes. Uh, okay. Because I think uh, commercial audit is still in need in the in the institution. Uh, we are not denying the importance of the commercial audit because that was still need to be to exist in the in all institutions including islamic branch institutions but in in, in 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 addition to that for the islamic branch institutions uh, they are a need to have share audit so i can see that the prospect is there because we have a lot of islamic branch institution in in the countries including in indonesia uh, you, I mean, there are a lot of Islamic banks, uh, Islamic financial institutions in Indonesia. And each of these financial institutions, there's also a need to have this Shara audit. I know maybe in Indonesia at the moment, Shara audit has not become a mandatory yet. Okay. But because I have my student also doing a PhD for Indonesia, I mean, for Indonesia. And she's doing on Shara governance in Indonesian Islamic banks. And then but there's also a need to have this in the in the future because uh, that's something that uh, what I can see that there's a prospect to, to do this in the future in Indonesia and also in other countries. So that will not really uh, stop the existing commercial audit, but just in addition. So we can see that commercial audit and plus share audit. And... I can see the prospect is still there lah, in my understanding. I'm not sure whether I've answered that question, uh, Sister Widya. Yes, Miss. Thank you for the answering the questions. You're welcome. 
Okay, thank you, um, Mbak Widya. And then the next question come from Irfi Medina. Okay. Mbak Irfi, yeah. Uh, yes, Miss, thank you. So I would like to ask, uh, in the case of Sharia Bank, is it possible if the Sharia Bank implemented both Islamic and conventional audit to audit at their bank? And what is the difference between the Sharia audit and conventional audit if it is implemented to the Sharia Bank? That's it, me. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Sister Irwi. Irwi, is it Irwi Medina? Uh, okay, okay. Yes, yes. yes. So, uh, Sister Penny, I can answer straight away the question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Directly. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you for the It's a very good question uh, because you are referring to the, the to the need for both audit in the in the Sharah Bank or in Islamic banks. Uh, yes, there is a need to have both. Uh, meaning that the the conventional audit or the existing audit still need to be there. And they are needed because they need to, to do the normal audit, the audit of financial statements, the audit of the internal control. So that one will not be done by the Shara auditor. So the, the external auditor, the internal auditor will do their normal audit as usual in the Islamic bank or in the Shara bank. Okay. Because otherwise, I think they will not be able to have this true and fair view as what you learn in auditing classes. Because that one will be provided by external auditor. I think in the financial statement, normally you will have the external auditor report that the financial statements are true and fair, right? So that will be the external auditor part, nothing to do with Shara auditor. But for the Shara auditor, Shara auditor will provide the, the assurance on the Shara complaint only. So they are not going to, to, to disturb the job of external auditor anyway. External auditor will do their job as, as usual, but the, the Shara auditor will just provide the assurance and only, the, only checking on Shara compliant. Because in my slide just now, I give example like financial statement. When the Shara auditor audit financial statement, they are not auditing similar to what the external auditors have done. External auditor have also audited financial statements to ensure that there's no error, there's no material misstatement, there's also no uh, everything comply with the accounting standards. But the Shara auditor will check the financial statement to ensure there's no uh, Shara no compliant terminology. Uh, and zakat also has been computed correctly. For example, all the sharia non corporate income has been channeled to charity because they are not allowed to earn the income because it's actually not halal income for the institution. So that is part of the sharia auditor uh, responsibility in the in the sharia bank or in the Islamic banks. Okay, Sister Sister uh, Ibi. Yes, thank you, Miss, for the answer. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, uh, thank you, Mbak Irfi. Then, uh, the other question. Anyone want to ask Prof. Noraini? Okay, there is no chat. Oh, can I ask questions? <laughs> okay. Mostly here, uh, what, what year students uh, in, this, in, this, in the session? The year, second year? Uh, actually, uh, this mixed student, uh, Prof, from uh, what is the best of 2021, yeah. Okay. And also, yeah, so the now the second, third semester for uh, so mixed. Okay, but they have to take all the Islamic accounting courses also later, is it, uh, Sister Penny? Yeah, uh, we have actually uh, four mandatory courses related to Islamic accounting, uh, Islamic accounting, and then is uh, accounting for Islamic banking and finance. Then uh, what is uh, Islamic financial management and also Islamic economic, if I'm not mistaken. So this the four mandatory subject to okay. the accounting student. Because you mentioned just now that they have not taken any Islamic banking subject so far. That's maybe the reason they are not able to really appreciate the share auditing lah because I think that's what I can see uh, at the moment because when they have taken the Sharia, I mean Islamic banking, for example, then I think they will also appreciate the importance of share audit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This the new knowledge for us, Dr. Rob. But again, it's not, it's not different. Lah. I think when you understand audit, then now you need to add the word Sharia audit now. Okay. And then mm -hmm. 
the the only different now is the share audit is focusing on share compliant. The normal audit is focusing on the normal audit scope that you have learned lah in your auditing classes. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. Any any more questions from the floor? Any question? Uh, Prof, yeah, if I want to ask you, Prof, so uh, accor according to you, what is the challenge for the implementation of Sharia audit notice? Maybe especially from the human resources, yeah. Yeah. I, I can, yeah, I, I, thank you, uh, Sister Penny. You are right to say that most of the challenges come from the people, the human resources, uh, to produce a good Sharia auditor or computer Sharia auditors. I think because at the moment we don't have really a, a qualification to become Shara auditors in the market or even in Malaysia or even in other countries as well. I don't think we have that kind of qualification. Maybe IOFI, like IOFI has that Shara auditor qualification. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, I think that's something that the university will have to, to also take that challenge lah, to, to ensure that universities can also able to produce the, the students, especially the accounting students who are able to do the normal audit and also can do share audit. Uh, so if you, if you understand the audit, meaning that you have the knowledge how to conduct the normal audit that you have learned in your accounting classes, then what you need to now to do now is to add on on the share requirement that I believe that you also be learning this in your program. Uh, then normally I can see if you combine, as I mentioned to, in, to you in my presentation earlier, if you combine these two, then you will have a good uh, Shara auditor that can do the job in the in the market. But yeah, it's not easy. Like, I think that will be uh, require a lot of time to develop that. But inshallah, I think we can do that with the existing resources. And then uh, the market also must ready to train them as well, not only to, to expect the university to provide everything, but the market also must have the, the program to train them to become a good Shara auditor later. Okay, yeah. Okay, thank you, Prof. So, uh, yeah, uh, maybe also I have a question. Uh, for, because if we want to be Sharia auditor, means that we have uh, what is more knowledge, not only audit, but also Sharia knowledge. But maybe how we, uh, what, is, what is the scope of Sharia knowledge that we should have? The competency of Sharia knowledge? Because, yeah, you know, maybe for accounting, student uh, it is okay when we talk about the accounting knowledge but when we maybe we learn about sharia yeah it is it is a big challenge for us uh, the scope of sharia knowledge that we should have for accounting student maybe yeah i think uh, okay thank you thank you Sister Penny. i think when i look from that perspective i mean looking from your question just now uh, what I can see for the share knowledge, the, the students must also equip with will be normally uh, to understand all the share contracts. I think if you go in Arabic, there is really uh, added points to you, added value to you because I also would like to see the share auditor also have good uh, understanding in Arabic. But again, that will not really stop you to become share auditors if you don't understand Arabic. Because if you can understand, for example, all the pillars of share contracts there that you will be learning later, I assume. Uh, I get example like maybe if you're talking about mudaraba, whatever contract that, share contract that will be there later that you're going to learn, you need to just understand if you want to do this mudaraba, what are the share requirements? A, B, C, D, E. So meaning that when the when the Islamic institution or Islamic bank is offering that share contract then they have to follow that share requirements. So the, the job of the share auditor is to check. You are, on, you are not doing that. You are just checking. Uh, so the, those mm -hmm. who are offering, they also need to understand how to do share requirements for the product. That's product department. They have to, to do that. But normally they will miss or they overlook or they, they, uh, they skip some of the process. Uh, then this is the job of share auditor to check so you have you have to yourself need to really understand the contract lah, a to z and then mm -hmm. only then audit if you don't understand the contract then you are not really able to do a good audit lah, because you don't understand what you want to check anyway at the end so that's something that i think you have to be equipped with and of course later maybe you can also join whatever program that maybe indonesian uh, institution can also offer 
to equip your society, maybe the, your central bank also will have some of the program that can also equip the, from the Sharah perspective. Because we have a lot of scholars also from Indonesia in Malaysia uh, that also sit in our Sharia uh, committee in Malaysian Islamic banks. So I think we have few uh, also from Indonesia. So I think they also the good mentor for the people in Indonesia or in Indonesia also later to, to equip with that kind of knowledge. But yeah, of course, like myself, I don't have, I don't, I cannot understand Arabic. Uh, I, I wish I can understand Arabic, but I can see that those who have that understanding of Arabic and have added value like to become share auditor. But then now we can see in the market, uh, mostly they don't really, uh, I mean, they are not come from share background to become share auditor, but they understand the share requirements for the share contracts. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Prof. Noraini. Any more question? I don't see any question from the brothers. <laughs> Just make a few sisters here. How many? Do we have brother? I can see some brothers in the in the screen. Yeah, yeah, Prof. Uh, we have many Muhammad's name here. <laughs> right. I try to look at my screen test. Many Muhammad. Any question from yeah, Muhammad? Yeah. Any Muhammad? Uh, we have question from sister again, Prof. Yeah, yeah okay. Salma. Uh, yeah. Uh, I want to ask a question. So the question is, uh, should all Sharia best corporate has a Sharia auditing process or is it okay if they just do the conventional audit? Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you, Sister Salma. What do you mean by Sharia? What just not Sharia based? What's your question at the beginning? I can't get it. Uh, can you repeat that, Sister Salma? Uh, should the the Sharia based corporate or the like the Sharia bank use the use the Sharia auditing pro process or is it okay if they just do the conventional audit process? Okay, uh, it's advice. I mean, it's good. It's recommended for them to have Sharia audit as well, lah, rather than just normal audit, uh, unless the the. The normal audit can also cater for syarikat. We can also see maybe the external auditor can also audit the syariah. Then we don't need the syarikat auditor in the institution. But most of the time in, in my experience, the external auditor will not want to focus beyond what they have done so far. They are not going to also audit for syariah meters. They just want to audit what being, uh, I mean, the based on the letter of engagement given to them. Uh, so that's where we need share audit. Uh, but again, I think maybe the central bank in the country will have to also provide that requirement lah because in Malaysia it's a, re a requirement, but in Indonesia maybe because uh, maybe at the current situation still okay, there's no need to have to share audit. Then that's maybe the reason why uh, they don't really make it mandatory to have share audit. Uh, that will maybe subjected to the central bank uh, requirements in the country. So that's what I can answer to you, Sister Salma. Uh, thank you, Prof. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, yeah, thank you, Mbak Salma. Any question? Okay, yeah, uh, no more question. Prof. So yeah, I think uh, yeah, I think uh, we have uh, uh, what is uh, clear yeah explanation about Sharia audit. Although maybe some of you for the participant you uh, don't take the subject of Islamic thing yet. For example, yeah, some some product maybe also uh, uh, Prof. When uh, when what is when the student learn about the maybe the term in Islamic. Banking also we have difficulty, Doctor Muraba Muraba is still <laughs> make make us confusing. But yeah, I, I think uh, yeah, UMY have tried to then introduce the term and also make uh, mandatory for the certain subject that related to Islamic accounting. So uh, thank you very much. Professor Noraini, thank you very much that your willingness to join to IPEC again. That we hope that uh, yeah, the collaboration between uh, accounting department in UMY and IUM and will be yeah, will be maintained in the future, Professor. Thank you very much. And
Thank you for the participation uh, for the student. I hope that they will get uh, insight for us to to know more yeah about the islamic accounting especially about uh, sharia audit and i will give back uh, this event to mc thank you very much prof noraini yeah, thank you for having me thank you so much all the participants you're welcome prof thank you all right so thank you miss noraini for the attractive material Hopefully, it can help the audience to have better understanding of Sharia how the topic. And thanks to Ms. Penny as the moderator who guide discussions today more clearly. Now, it is turning to the last agenda, which is closing. As the master of ceremony, I do apologize for any mistakes during this event. And finally, I say thank you. But before leaving this event, can we please everyone turning on your camera because you want to take a picture? Okay, so ready? One, two, three. Uh, once more. One, two, three. And once again, please. One, two, three. Okay. Thank you for joining this event and see you on the next event. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wassalamualaikum So, uh, Penny buat masa in accounting, right? In IUM? Yeah. Oh, anda siapa sebuah Izzah? Uh, Dr. Hyrule. Oh, Dr. Hyrule. That's so why yeah. you're not familiar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. MSC itu yeah. juga accounting UAE ni. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we uh, we went to IUM when we proposed the collaboration, Dr. Between IUM and UMY. When oh, the yeah. dean is still Prof. Malia. I remember, okay. Oh. <laughs> Lama dah, okay. Yeah, itu uh, before.